for the uh, uh, the purpose of us, then after the then you'll have your lunch. Okay? Alhamdulillah. نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون إنما يتذكر أولو الألباب صدق الله وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم <coughs> Distinguished Ulama, my dear respected brothers and sisters, the students of Quran and Sunnah, the student of this respected madrasa, Rihalatul Ulum, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless me with this opportunity that I came here to Philadelphia to see you, the students of Quran and Sunnah and the students of Deen. A great alim of Arabian world who passed away last week, Allama Yusuf al Karzawi, Rahimahullah. I was there in Qatar. He invited me. So I went to his maktaba in his office. I got lunch with Sheikh Rahimahullah. His maktaba was in the second story and second floor. Later on when I was leaving, so he was accompanying me to my car. He had some problem in his knees. I say, Sheikh, you should stay here. So he said, La, At-Tashi'u min sunnati Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To say bye-bye to the guest and to give him a company until his ride. That is sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His wording was, Wa khasatan tashi'u al-ulama. And especially to do this with the ulama of deen, so I said, Shaykh, Lastu bi alim inna ma na talib al Quran wa Sunnah. I am not a alim, I am a student of Quran and Sunnah. Fadahika wa tabassim. Wa qal fa idhan haza tashi'u wajib. Allah. So he said, now this tashi'i is wajib, not sunnah. <laughs> so he said, Shaykh, why? He said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, 
وَإِنَّ الْمَلَائِكَةَ لَتَزَغُ أَجْنِحَتَهَا رِزَلْ لِتَالِبِ الْعِلْمِ That the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are flooring their wings for the students of Quran and Sunnah. That's your, that's your status. That's your high position in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when you are coming for dars, or you are going back, the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saluting you. Don't take it light. This status has not been given to the kings and to the khulafa. And to say with due respect, not to the ulama even. But that is the case of the students of Quran and Sunnah. Even though if he is a student of Nazira, one of Mikhail Saab is a long time friend of mine. He is making very good jobs. Yes. <laughs> so, I was asking him that Marami Kailsa, what you are teaching now? So he said that I am teaching actually the Matan of Jalalain. So I recalled my mind. One of the ulama here, he is the student of the son of my three mashayikh. Three mashayikh in a sense, that one was his father. Another one was his uncle. And a third one, he was the uncle of his father and his uncle as well. Mawla Mufti Razaul Haq Sahib of Darulum Zakaria in South Africa. So, I recall my mind that once we had in our masjid a very old man. He had learned only salat very difficultly and praying his salat with alhamdulillah rabbil alameen and qul huwa allah wa had nothing else but he used to have a big turban a big beard a long dasha having a stick here the tasbih people they were thinking that he is a great scholar maybe he is the hafiz of bukhari and muslim or maybe he is the Imam Hakim at this time. <coughs> so once he said to our Sheikh, that Sheikh, people think like this, while I do not know anything. Some of them, they ask me, that you are here with Sheikh, what you are studying? So if I will tell them that I am learning quran Karim Nazira, so that will put me too much down in their eyes. So what should I tell them? So Shaykh Ramadullah Ali, he told him, you should tell them that I am studying the Matan of Baizavi. <laughs> Baizavi is Tafsir. And Tafsir is of course the interpretation of a Matan and that Matan is Holy Quran. <laughs> so Mahani Kailz have said the same. That I am teaching here the Matan of Jalalain. So anyhow, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam and dear and respected students, so your status is too much high. And sometime I do make a joke. One of our friend, Tarijan, he was with me there in Pakistan. So, in Dalom Haqqaniya, which is my mother, Ilmi. So there I made a joke that all Tulaba of Quran and Sunnah, they are awliya Allah. All students of Quran and Sunnah, they are? Awliya Allah. Say. I say, why? Because a wali, or a brief or concise definition of a wali is the one who said bye-bye to dunya for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is nothing else more than that as far as a wali is concerned. And you, the students, you can earn some dollars somewhere working in 7-Eleven or somewhere in gas station, or 99 cents, or something like that. You don't do that. You said bye-bye to that, and you came to Darul to study Quran and Sunnah. So that is the definition of Waliullah. Allah, inna awliya Allah, la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. As you know, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that people are asking, Shunaib Ghadadi Rahmatullahi Alayhi, Somebody asked him that, Sheikh, 
how you became a wali of Allah. So, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, he said this is a misconception. Who told you that I am a wali of Allah? I never said it, that I am a wali of Allah. A wali of Allah, he will never claim that I am a wali. A proper alim of Quran and Sunnah will never claim that he is a alim. Always he will say that I am a student of Quran and Sunnah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep a student until our last moment. Amen. Say Amen. Amen. Because the, the moment when you will claim that I am a alim, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will close the door of further more ilm on you. Because when you claim that you are a alim, it means that you approach the peak. So what else you will do? Now there will be your fall down. Our Sheikh Rahmatullahi Ali, the uncle of the father of Bukhti Radha he never said that I am a alim. And he was telling us, don't say that. Even a student of him, when he was visiting him, he was introducing him to his fellows. So he used to say, this is our friend. He was our companion here in Dars. He was our colleague here in Dars. So he said, Sheikh, actually for a student, you to say that this is my student, that's a pride for him. And he is looking for that word to come out of your mouth. He said, I will never say that. That so and so is my student. I say, but Sheikh, why? He said, because of two reasons. I asked him, what are these two reasons? He said, the first reason is that Adab is gone and Adab is gone. What he said? The Adab is gone, the Adab is gone. Twice. Yeah. Adab is gone and Adab is gone. So one Adab is in the meaning of respect. And the second Adab is in the meaning of literature, study of literature. Like, Al Adab al Arabi, Al Adab al Farisi, Al Adab al Urdiya, Al Adab al Bushtawiya, Al Adab al Farisiya, wa ma'ila zalik. Got it? So he said, Adab is gone, Adab is gone. I said, what, what do you mean, Shaykh? He said that Adab and literature, people, they do not study it. They say that this is waste of time. Yes? And number two, the respect is gone. So if I will say that this is my student, and he he will go out and he will tell people that he was telling lie. I never studied with him. Because Adab is gone. Got it? And number two, the second Adab is also gone. And then he said, the second reason is why I don't say that he is my student. Because that is a type of a stick bar that you are thinking of yourself too much high. That I am a sheikh. I am a teacher. I am this and that. And the moment you will utter it, Satan will follow you. That now he is very easy to be kicked. And when Satan will kick you, so the way he has been kicked out of Jannah, if not to that level, but at least close to that, he will give you a kick. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us from the kick of Satan. Say Amen. Amen. So my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam and here in respected students, you are the beloved of Allah because you have been selected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to study the deen of Allah. So, because as you know, that I don't know that what you people are studying in Ilmul Aqaid nowadays in madrasas. Because when I go back to Pakistan and I do ask in madrasa and I'm giving dars there and I do ask the students that in such and such book this has been written. So the book is included in Nisab, they say turned out. Then I refer to another fun. I said, this book. So they said, kicked out. So I said, then what you are studying then? If this is kicked out and that is kicked out and that is kicked out. So I don't know that what here you are studying in al Kalam, but anyhow, even if that is Al-Aqaid Al-Nasafiyya or Al-Aqaid Al-Tahaviyya or Al-Aqaid Al-Ghazaliyya because in Al-Aqaid, these three small books are very famous. Number one, Al-Aqaid Imam Al-Ghazali. Number two, Al-Aqaid Imam Al-Tahawi. And number three, Al-Aqaid Imam Al-Nasafi. Got it? So, sometime back, 
شرح العقائد النصفية was included in our نصاب now I don't know that is or that is not that is الحمدللہ so anyhow in علم العقائد what has been discussed and debated the عقائد the faiths and the beliefs and the basic faith in Islam is faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is matloob and meant but that is such a subject that nobody can approach it speak everybody will be knowing a little bit about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ma'arafna ka haqqa ma'arifatika wa ma'abadna ka haqqa ibadatika the Abideen and the Zuhar, when they are worshipping Allah day and night, still they do admit and utter that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have not known you the way you are deserving to be known. And we have not worshipped you the way you are deserving to be worshipped. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, Ruzi Allah wa ta'ala an, who is افضل الخلائق بعد الانبياء وارحم امتي بامتي ابو بكر رضي الله تعالى عنه رافق صلى الله عليه وسلم تايتل هيم اند هي از افضل الخلائق افتر الانبياء عليه الصلوات والتسليمات ذا ماتش مور عابد ار ذا فيري بيج عابد اوف الله سبحانه وتعالى افتر الانبياء بت ستيل وين هي واز ميكينج دعاء هي واز سينج يا من غايته معرفته القصور عن معرفته all that entity are that zat whose utmost knowledge about him is or utmost marifa of him is that a person has to admit that we couldn't have known you but this marifat is meant and when something when you cannot approach and speak, still you are trying to. So it will create ranks. It will produce darajat. So there will be arif to this level, arif to this level, arif to this level. And wa arafu nasi li Rabbi Azza wa Jalla huwa Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the level, you will know Allah. To the same level, you will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The level you will know Allah, so through the same level you will be having the fear of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and the level you have the fear of Allah, you would be considered a alim to that level. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in a hadith, "Rasul Hikmat Makhafatullah." Rasul Hikmat Makhafatullah. Now, Ras, little meaning is head. Yes, but here. That is either the fountain head or that is the ending head. Mean that point where from you start, that point where you approach and you arrive. So Rasul Hikmati Makhafatullah, it means the hikmah or wisdom, and actually wisdom is meant from from ilm. Imam Abu Hanifa Ramatullah Ali. Qazi Abu Yusuf. He asks. That Imam, mal ilm. What is ilm? What is knowledge? So Imam Rahmatullahi Ali, he said, "Fahmu al-lafz wal-ma'na." Fahmu al-lafz wal-ma'na. To know the lafz and to know the meaning. That is ilm. That is ilm. So then he asked him, "Wa mal fiq?" What is fiq? So Imam Rahmatullahi Alayhi, he told him, Fahmu Murad al-Mutakallim. Fahmu? Murad al-Mutakallim. What the Mutakallim has meant with the words he has uttered and he has spoken. If you will approach that maqsad and murad of Mutakallim, so you have become, and that what Imam Rahmatullahi Alayhi, he tried in his fiqh. The basic difference. In the fiqh of Imam and fiqh of Jumhur rahimahumullah is that Jumhur they are going by text or literal meaning of text. And Imam rahmatullahi alayhi he is diving like a diver in the ocean and then he is trying to bring out some pearl there from that habit.
or some coral there from that area. That that what the murad of Butakalim is. He is trying to find out that what is the murad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah. Or what is the murad of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith. So I said that fiqh is fahm murad al-mutakallim. So then Imam Abu Yusuf rahimahullah, he asked, ma yasiru rajulu aliman? How a person will become a alim? So Imam Rahmatullahi alayhi says, but ta'allumihi anil mashayikh wa bitadarrusihi al-kutub. When he will be learning and studying under ulama, and he will be studying books there in the library and the maktaba, he is a studious guy, so thus he will become alim. So then he asked him, wa bimata yasiru huwa faqihan? How he will become a faqih? So Imam Rahmatullahi Alayhi says, بِعَمَلِهِ بِمَا قَدْ عَلِمَهُ What he has learned, what he has understood, when he will practice it, so he is the faqih of that masala. As you know, that if you will memorize the book of driving, yes, from A to Z, because driving has a book or not? Say, Inshallah, Muhammad Kaid Sahib said that lunch is available. <laughs> I know that, uh, yes, uh, you have not eaten anything since uh, early in the morning, so maybe you don't have the energy. Mm. Yes, but whatever energy you have, you have to spend it. Consume it. Yes, to be ready for the lunch. <laughs> Got it? So, <coughs> for driving, the DMV is giving a book or not? Yes. You are studying it. Yes. And then you are getting tested. Yes. yes. But if you memorize the whole book and you received marks 100%, 100%, but as long as you have not practiced that book by driving a car, would you be considered a driver? No. The government will allow you to drive a car? No. Never. Same is the case of every professional knowledge. As long as you have not practiced like a doctor, he memorized all the books of MD and medicine or even surgery from A to Z, like a Hafiz who has memorized Quran from Alhamdulillah to Anas. Got it? But he is not doing clinic. Or he has never done clinic. So will be there any crazy man to go to him to do his surgery? No. Why? Because he is not practical. Same is the case of a alim. If he is not practical, he could not be considered a alim. Otherwise, you don't memorize those many things as our computer or this small telephone. I don't have it. Yes. Mohammed Kair sir, he was telling me, I will give you one telephone. I said, I don't want it. Yeah, and maybe I am the only one in America who does not have a telephone. <laughs> Yes, and that's why you will be thinking about me that what a crazy mullah. Yes, that in this era, he does not have a telephone. You know what I'm saying? So anyhow, this smart telephone, how big a memory there in this telephone is, whatever you will be clicking, it will give you that that is here. Because computer is there. So now if memorization are preserving us lot of things that is alim and the person will become a alim because of that so this telephone is greater alim i should call him imam bukhari <laughs> and i should call him imam muslim and i have to call him hafiz ibn asir asqalani or imam zahabi or hafiz ibn Qadama, and just name everybody or even angelina jodi you know, you don't know. One of the guys, I tell him that who is Angelina Jolie because she is our neighbor. Yes. We are living close to the Hollywood. Hollywood. Yes. So Angelina Jolie, she is a very famous actress there. So anyhow, my dear respected one, and look at me. Sometimes I do make this type of jokes. I think that two, three months before we were there in Darul Islam Madrasa in Chicago, so the students and the ulama were there. So I was referring to something. So I said that sometime when we are there in the beach, you cannot conceive it because you are living in <coughs> Philadelphia. Here the weather is cold, but 
you know that California is very hot weather. Even nowadays, we have 102 and 103. Oh. Yes, and uh, in summer, peak summer, this year, we went up to 117. Oh. Got it? So the people, they are going to the beaches in hot weather at midday. And as you know, the culture here, because especially for, for the ladies, yes, they are walking there in natural dress. So, <laughs> you have to focus on words. <laughs> yeah. Don't focus on anything else, only words. Don't go ahead. Because proceeding further, that is crossing the red line. Or the red light, don't cross the red light. So, I said there that when sometime we are on beach, so there the ulama, they were looking at one another. They put him mula sitting got involved. <laughs> that he is going to beach also, where the naked ladies and girls are roaming around here and there. Yes? So, I caught them a suspense. I gave it a pause that let them think. Yes? So for one or two minutes, they were thinking I was doing like this. And maybe they were thinking that now he is in that imagination. <laughs> yes? And then after two minutes, I said that that is after 12 o'clock at night when nobody is there on the beach. Because sometime after this, 12 o'clock at night, I said to the brothers that let's go to the beach. So at that time, you go and we yes, run there and they are playing and things like that. So anyhow, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Sheikh Junaid Baghdadi, Rahimahullah, somebody asked him, that Sheikh, how you became a wali? He said, who told you that I am a wali of Allah? I never claimed it. He said that people say that he is a great wali. So he said, then you should ask the people. <laughs> because I don't know it, so you should ask them that how you call him a wali. Yes, now the guy he noticed. Or he understood the bottom line that what Sheikh mean. He said, no, no, no. Actually, I am asking Bimasa Yasiru Rajulu Wali Allah. How a Muslim will become the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or Wali Allah? So Imam Junaid Baghdadi Ramatullah, he said, Al-Ana Sahahta 